Hello and welcome to this idea pod salon on the hidden trap of trying to improve yourself. This is a really big idea that I think is pervasive in the self-improvement industry and that's that you need to keep on improving yourself. In fact, I think that this is one of the real cultural icons of Western civilization where we keep on needing to improve, to fix ourselves, to change ourselves. So this salon is all about unpacking that idea because I think that there is a more powerful way to build a motor of change deep within to really connect with your inner power. And the most important thing that you need to do right now is to stop trying to improve yourself all of the time. So let me explain what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to raise this proposition that you don't need to improve yourself to change your life. The way that I'm going to try to convince you of this in this presentation is to first of all go through who am I, what's my own experience with this, and then I'm going to break down five common myths in the self-improvement industry that I think is absolutely pervasive that we need to let go of. So the first myth is that you need to repress your anger to make it go away. You've probably heard that many times before. I think that's completely wrong and I'll explain why. The second myth is that when you're down, think positively. Let's, we'll go through why that's such a common thing for many people to think and why I think it sets you on the wrong path. The third myth is that you need to visualize your goal to make it come true. How often have you come across that around the ideas of the law of attraction? I think it really sets you on the wrong path. We'll go through that in just a moment. The fourth myth is that you need to repeat affirmations to change how you think. Affirmations, do they work, don't they work? We'll explore that a little more deeply in just a moment. The fifth myth is that you should strive to achieve your purpose in life. I'm gonna go through a very different way to understand what your purpose really is and how to connect with it. I'll then go through an alternative approach to connecting with who you really are deep down, with the inner sanctums of power that exist deep within you. And the first step that you need to take is to stop trying to improve yourself. And then I'll go through a very different way of moving your life forward. This is an idea pod salon. There is a bar just to your right where you can leave a note anytime that's going to be sent to me directly by email. I'll do my best to respond to any questions you've got or any comments you've got as they come in. So make sure that you share your feedback at any moment while you're watching this salon. I love to hear from the people who are watching it. Please do reach out to me. But let's now go through. Who am I and why am I even sharing this idea this proposition with you here. My name is Justin Brown. I'm the founder of IdeaPod and I'm a former self-help addict. I used to be so down on myself all of the time. I was my own worst enemy. I would look around me and see that people were so much more successful than me and I'd compare myself to them and it made me extremely lonely and it made me feel extremely broken. Well, what I ended up doing was with a huge amount of energy and enthusiasm, I embraced pretty much everything in the self-improvement, the self-help industry. And I kept on trying to fix the problems that I identified. I'd figure out that I was a little bit too insecure around other more successful people around me. I would compare myself to them and I would try to fight against this insecurity. I'd realize that in my relationships, I was getting a little bit too jealous of the girls I was dating and the men that they were meeting. So I'd try to fix my jealousy rather than handling it in a very different and what I now believe to be a more powerful way. I was really my own worst enemy. I was addicted to self-help. I tried everything from transcendental meditation through to neuroemotional technique through to a whole range of different approaches like reishi, yoga, you name it. Now I think these approaches have a lot of great things going for them. You can really take the best of them as I believe I've managed to do along the way. But there's a really fundamental idea at the core of a lot of these self-help approaches and that's that you are a broken individual that needs to be fixed. And you can do that by identifying what's wrong and then trying to fix it step by step. Now, I've used a lot of these ideas to create a very different direction for my own life. I am the founder of IdeaPod. It started as a social network for ideas. And over the last few years, we've moved in a very different direction, creating an ideas publishing platform with millions of monthly readers. Now, I'm not here to tell you that I am a successful entrepreneur. There are certainly many things that have gone well. And the fact that you're here watching this salon is testament to that. But it's certainly not perfect. I am not perfect. I am 
I still battle with many of the challenges that I started this journey with, but the difference is the way I relate to those challenges, the way I relate to myself, and I now use these challenges as fuel for my fire, and I feel like it really, it drives me forward the obstacles that I face in life, and that's what I'm gonna try to do in this salon, to convince you of the proposition that you can stop trying to improve yourself, and you can now start to connect yourself in a very different way to develop your own personal power. That's the journey I've been on. Now I want to convince you of this by going through the five key myths in the self-improvement industry. So the reason that these five myths are so pervasive is because the self-improvement industry is such a big industry. It's shaping not just the online courses or the different programs of change or the retreats that you have no doubt come across. It shapes, I think, the mainstream media system, the way we communicate with each other, the advice we give to each other. And this industry has become an, addict an addictive industry. When you get started with self-improvement, you often get addicted and you need to keep on trying new things because when you identify one problem and you make some progress in changing your life using the different tools at your disposal, you then have the mindset of always looking for more problems within. And that's what we're gonna to try to break down in this salon and provide a very different way of creating a motor of change deep within that will be with you forever. So myth number one is to repress your anger to make it go away. How often have you come across this advice that you need to defeat your anger? The conventional advice is to let go of your angry thoughts, to even do some exercise to get rid of your anger. People will tell you to instead of being angry to think about something positively. You'll be told to count slowly to 10 or just to breathe through your anger. Actually, I think that our anger is something that can be extremely powerful when we think of our anger in a different way. So I wanna quote the shaman, Ruda Iyande, who I think has some very powerful perspectives with how to relate to our emotions and to use them in a very constructive way. So I'm gonna quote Ruda Iyande. And Ruta says, even the most challenging emotions have an important function in life. Grief can bring compassion, anger can fuel you to overcome your limits, and insecurity can become a catalyst for growth, but only if you give them space inside of yourself. Instead of fighting against your own nature, you can use life's challenges for your progress. Now the key point here I think with anger is that anger can be turned into a motivating force. And that's something that I managed to do quite regularly now. Whenever I feel angry with a situation, I'm able to connect with that anger in a way that provides me with a lot of motivation to face my challenges in life head on. And that's something that I think we really need to face up to. Our anger is not necessarily a negative thing. I think that in history, more changes come from the anger that people feel at a lack of justice in society that it motivates them to go and do something about it to create something that is much more just. So your own anger in your own life can be used as a powerful catalyst for growth. The second myth we often come across is that when you're down, you need to think positively. The conventional wisdom says that once you replace your negative thoughts with positive ones, you'll start having positive results. I come across this all of the time, the people urging you to think positively. The thing that I think it inadvertently does is that it denies us the power of our negative emotions. Of course, I think it's very important for us to see the silver lining, to see the opportunity before us rather than dwelling on the negative. But emotions like sadness and insecurity and frustration can be catalysts for growth as the shaman Ruda Iyande says. So what I wanna do is now quote Osho, a really famous quote by Osho where he, I think, really sets into context why positive thinking can be quite dangerous when it denies us the power of our so-called negative emotions. And Osho says, sadness gives depth, happiness gives height, sadness gives roots, happiness gives branches, Happiness is like a tree going into the sky and sadness is like the roots going down into the womb of the earth. Both are needed and the higher a tree goes, the deeper it goes simultaneously. The bigger the tree, the bigger will be its roots. In fact, it's always in proportion, that's its balance. 
the more that we're able to embrace those negative emotions as they come into our lives, the more we can really soar in life, the more it can provide the catalyst for our own growth. The third myth that is absolutely pervasive that people recommend to each other all of the time that I'd like to break down a little further right now is the myth to visualize your goal to make it come true. That's what people urge you to do, to visualize your goal, to creatively visualize. The conventional thinking goes, hold the image of yourself succeeding. Visualize it so vividly that when the desired success comes, it seems to be merely echoing a reality that has already existed in your mind. I think that this is one of the core ideas around the law of attraction. When we're told to create vision boards, to keep on imagining success even before it comes, so that we start to create that alternative reality and then quite magically through the power of manifestation, that's gonna come, what we're visualizing is gonna come more and more powerfully into our life. Now, what I think that does is first of all, it separates the goal from what you need to do to get it. And second, it enables you to enjoy the feeling of being successful without actually having achieved anything. That takes away the power of the goal and can even make you complacent, unwilling to work hard or take risks to get what you already have in your daydreams. Basically, I think when we're always visualizing success before it happens, we become addicted to the visualizations that we have. It actually distracts us from really doing the hard work, from embracing the challenges that are before us. It distracts us from facing up to the reality that may be very different right now than what we want this new reality to be. It provides a demotivating force as it manipulates us into thinking that success is incredibly easy to come by. In fact, I think that success is better thought of as a long-term process and we need to break down our goals into very incremental steps that become habits and routines in our everyday life. And the key point is that habits need to come from an automatic way of living life rather than a consciously processed way of living life. And that's a very powerful point. Rather than always thinking about the success, it needs to be very natural. The actions we take need to happen unconsciously. When you're visualizing all of the time, you're consciously thinking about it, and you're taking away the power of forming that habitual behavior around what's gonna create that success. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail in just a moment. The fourth myth that I come across all of the time, and you probably do too, is that You need to repeat affirmations to change your ways of thinking. Now, some of the most common affirmations I come across, I'm going to read out to you right now. One of them is, today is a new day and it brings with it a new set of opportunities for me to act on. Or another one, I'm attentive to the opportunities and I seize them as they arise. Another one, I have full confidence in myself and my abilities. Another one, I can do all the things that I commit myself to. No obstacle is too big or too difficult for me to handle because what lies inside me is greater than what lies ahead of me. I am committed to improving myself and I am getting better daily. I am not held back by regret or mistakes from the past. I am moving forward daily. Absolutely nothing is impossible for me. The problem with affirmations is quite similar to the issues around creative visualizations. What it does is it distracts us from facing up to the cold, hard realities of the change that we need to create in our life. The reality is that the only way to change the final product, which is your self-esteem, is to change what goes into making up your self-esteem. So let me give you some examples. If you ever find yourself in bad relationships where your negative self-view is getting reinforced, then you need to either change the way those people treat you by being more assertive or change who who you interact with. And that's just one example. Our relationships in our life are so important to our self-esteem. Rather than constantly repeating affirmations about how loved you are, instead you need to demand the respect of people around you by engaging in actions that are full of integrity, that treat people with respect, and that treat yourself with respect, where you stand up for yourself. Another example might be in a job where you're getting denigrated. You need to insist that you be treated more appropriately or take action and actually change your jobs. Another example is that if you are being disrespected in the workplace, 
perhaps you need to try to do your job better than you've done it before so that over time people start to treat you in different ways. Now these are some very simple examples around the importance of emphasizing taking action as opposed to always repeating affirmations. The fifth myth is around purpose. And the myth is that you should strive to achieve your purpose in life. Now something I come across quite regularly is a quote like this. If you want to identify me, ask me not where I live or what I like to eat or how I comb my hair, but ask me what I am living for in detail. Ask me what I think is keeping me from living fully for the thing that I want to live for. And this is really some conventional wisdom that your purpose is everything. And what you need to do immediately is identify your purpose in life and start to move towards your purpose. In fact, I came across these ideas thanks to the shaman Ruda Yande. And Ruda helped me to understand that modern day society, modern day ways of understanding purpose often places the purpose in the future as opposed to what's happening right now. It manipulates us into trying to live a life that is different from what's happening right now. I'm going to quote Ruda Yande. Ruda says, Living your purpose means forgetting what you've achieved in the past and what you want to achieve in the future and simply embracing your life right now. Give yourself to it, co-partnering with life with the spontaneity of a child. And Ruda has a very powerful framework for discovering the purpose that is already existing in your life. He helps us to identify that purpose so that we realize that the actions that we naturally undertake are very connected to a purpose that has been with us for all of our lives. So these are five myths that I come across so often in the self-help industry and they're always encouraging us to try to improve ourselves. And I think there's a very different way that we need to really embrace to develop our own personal power, to develop that power within and it's really about the self-improvement industry distracting us from who we really are deep down, distracting us from the deeper power that we all have to create change. This is why myself and the IdeaPod team have developed a five-step process for developing your personal power. It's based on my own learnings from some of the world's most authentic spiritual teachers out there. It is all about shattering the myths of the self-improvement industry, shattering the idea that you need to live in the future, that you need to fix yourself. It's all about arriving at a place of very deep acceptance of who you are right now, flaws and all, so that you can start to turn your challenges in your life into your most powerful allies as you start to really move forward in a very different kind of way with a different kind of rhythm. That's what I, sh what I want to share with you right now is this five-step process that you can apply into your own life. So step one is all about creating a new culture in your own life, a new set of norms and behaviors, reframing entitlement and blame. I think that we're all born as victims in a way. And the reason is that as human beings, we're entirely dependent on our parents for such a long period of time. We're dependent for our own welfare where other people are responsible for our own happiness for our own fulfillment in life it creates the set of behaviors within that other people are responsible for us rather than ourselves taking responsibility and i think that a whole lot of very successful people very fulfilled people in life learn pretty early on that they need to take responsibility for their own life no matter where they come from no matter how difficult their childhood was some of these very successful people i think pretty much always take control take responsibility for everything that's happening in their own life so step one is about creating a new culture around entitlement and blame such that we end up taking complete responsibility for every aspect of our life step two is building your own authentic connection with your power within it's very difficult to build that connection when you're always listening to the advice of other people, especially in the self-improvement industry. Because people who 
have managed to build their own connection are often the ones up on stage giving advice based on their own journey. But we're all such incredibly unique people. We need to find our own connection with our own inner resources of power. And once you've got that connection, that's when life really does start to change. So we've taken responsibility for everything in our life and we've built this deeper connection within. The third step is that we need to put things into perspective. We need to create a very powerful operating cognitive framework in our life so that every time a challenge rears its ugly head in our lives, we immediately have the tools to turn that challenge into a powerful opportunity. Now this sounds like positive thinking, but actually this is negative thinking because we look at the challenge head on. We focus on the negative aspects of it and the positive thinking around it is the natural result. So that's the third step is reframing things in our life such that challenges get turned into a very powerful opportunity. The fourth step is all about taking action, but taking action in a different way where we create very small incremental steps to move ourselves forward that become habitual, that very much become powerful goals, but goals broken down into little steps so that we very naturally start our day achieving our goals moving forward without having to think too much about our goals. The fifth step, once we've been through these four steps, the fifth step is to create an entirely new reality and purpose based on shattering the myths of self-improvement so that we can see our position in this universe in a very different way so that we're fully taking responsibility for who we are so that we start to identify a purpose that ex has existed within us for all of our life. That is the five step process to creating a powerful motor of change within. It's something that you can do right now by giving up on these myths of the self-improvement industry, by stopping trying to improve yourself and starting to get really comfortable with who you really are deep down within. If that's all that you take away from this salon that you can stop trying to improve yourself, I'll be very happy. I think that alone is going to change your life. And that's really what we're here to do. We're here to take this opportunity to create a very different direction for us, to wake up to the reality of the power that we all have deep within. It's up to everyone at some point in their lives to take responsibility and develop their personal power. No one can do this for you. It's entirely up to you. That's the opportunity before you. By stopping trying to improve yourself, I think that you'll be taking a very powerful step forward. This is why I want to provide you with the opportunity to take IdeaPod's 30-day online journey called Developing Your Personal Power. I've put this together along with the IdeaPod team based on the five-step process that I've just outlined for you. So we take you really deep into each step of the process. We create action steps for you to undertake so that by the end of this 30-day process, you will have created a very powerful motor of change deep within you. We've got premium videos, modules, lessons going right into the latest psychological research around why we need to give up on the idea that we need to improve ourselves all the time and how we can create a very different operating rhythm for ourselves so that we move forward in life in a much more powerful way. The impact of this 30-day online course, this 30-day online journey is incredibly profound. And this is the impact I've felt in my own life. The impact is that you will live the life you've always dreamed of without compromising who you really are. And I think that's really one of the most important things when we're trying to create change in our own life, we shouldn't compromise, we shouldn't change who we are deep down inside. So in this online journey, we provide you with the tools to identify what's important to you deep down so that you can start to design a new kind of life for yourself around this deeper motor of change that moves you forward that's deeply authentic to who you are. The other impact is that you'll identify your true life purpose and let your life purpose drive you forward. So we go through the five step process and it's very important that the fifth step is about designing your purpose in life because every step that's come before with the action steps we share is all 
designed in a way that helps you by the end identify what your purpose really is. And by the time people come through this 30 day process, this online journey, they often discover that their purpose is much more simple than they could ever have expected, but also very different than what they thought it would be from the beginning. And the reason that it's such a powerful journey is that the purpose is identified from the action steps that have come before in every step of the process along the way. The other impact is that you'll create a motor of change within that will always be with you no matter what challenges you face. This is such a powerful approach to creating change, developing your own personal power that you will no longer be reliant on the self-help industry. You'll no longer be addicted to always trying to fix yourself. You'll arrive at a place of very deep inner peace and contentment and fulfillment, a place that I feel like I've arrived at, that I'm extremely grateful to the different gurus and teachers, people like Ruta Yanda who have taught me so much of what I know today, where I'm not always trying to fix myself all the time. I'm not always my own worst enemy. I'm absolutely not perfect and I'm okay with that. I start to turn the challenges and obstacles in my life into my most powerful friends and that's what really drives me forward. So the impact is incredibly profound of embedding this motor of change deep within. There's many ways you can embed that motor of change deep within you. This online journey is just one of them, but I think it is an incredibly powerful way for you to take a powerful step forward and really change your life. There is over $2,000 worth of value in this online journey and you're gonna be so surprised when I share with you in a moment the price of getting access to all of these premium materials. But first, let me tell you that this online journey gives you the tools to make it happen yourself at a fraction of the cost. Often if you engage in coaching programs with different gurus or coaches out there, it costs thousands of dollars for you to do one-on-one -on -one sessions to create the kind of change that you'll get from this online journey. What you get as part of this online journey is five modules which mirrors the five-step process and 25 lessons that go really deep into each step and it's really easy to consume as well. You could do it in just probably five to 10 minutes a day over the 30 day period and you'll easily immerse yourself in the materials and you'll get the action steps and you'll be applying it into your own life. Your life is about to become a laboratory of change as you apply your learnings to what's happening already in your life. It's a 30 day process. You can do it quicker or you can do it much longer. You've got lifetime access to these materials so that you can go at your own pace you get a detailed overview of the theory behind each module. We go pretty deep into some of the different spiritual teachers out there, people like Rudy Yande, people like Viktor Frankl and a few others. And we give you the resources to really summarize their teachings so that you can learn it very quickly and apply it into your own life. We've also got videos by myself to accompany each module. I loved creating these videos. I loved sharing some of my own stories about how I've applied these changes into my own life and we've got recommended readings for each module and a private discussion area where you can connect with me at any time to share your own experiences. And I really look forward to getting to know you on this journey. What this journey ends up doing is it puts me by your side as I guess some sort of a moderator or a curator of different sets of ideas. So if you've been convinced by what I've shared about the importance of not trying to improve yourself and you'd like someone like me alongside you, this is the best way to take this powerful step forward. So I really hope that you'll join me on this journey. So it's over $2,000 worth of value, but it's yours for only $80 and you get lifetime access to these materials immediately right now. There's a link on your screen. You can click on that, be taken through and get access to these materials for $80. And it's even better because we're going to keep on updating the quality of these materials as we move forward in life, as I learn new things about the self-improvement industry, the quality is already extremely high. It will take you through this 30 day process. You will have embedded this motor of change deep within, but we are gonna add more materials as we go on. So you get lifetime access to it. The price is gonna go up pretty soon once we add those materials, but you get lifetime access to it uh, from now, right away, you can have this forever. So it's only 30 days for you to re-engineer your life and create a motor of change deep within without risking time, money, and pain. Now let me explain about not risking money. 
we are providing a very unique lifetime money back guarantee. That's right. If at any time you tell us that you've been through the full 30 days, the full 25 lessons, and there has not been a powerful impact in your life, no questions asked, money back guarantee. That's how confident we are that this process will create a massive mindset shift. It will help you to see the obstacles in your life in a very different way. We are providing a lifetime money back guarantee. All you have to do is go through the full online course, the online journey, and if you've tried the action steps and really tried to create the change in your life, all you have to do is have gone through the actual lessons. We're gonna totally trust you that you've tried to implement the action steps. All you have to do is send one email to our customer service team and you get money back right away. So you're not actually risking money. It's only $80 to create a very powerful motor of change deep within and to have some incredible impacts in your life. So the question is, do you want to live the life of your dreams right now where you are fully connected to your deeper life's purpose? Do you want to live a life where the obstacles in your life are no longer causing you fear and anxiety, but instead are being turned into your most powerful ally? Do you want to create a life where you're no longer living based on the ideas of future happiness and instead living a life full of inner content and peace based on what's happening right now? Do you want to live a life where your relationships fully nourish you, where you feel deeply connected to the people around you, where you can identify what is nourishing you and start to move things away that are no longer serving you moving forward in life? Do you want to live this life? If the answer is yes, please do join me in this online journey. You're not risking very much by taking this decision. You can join me on the developing your personal power journey. Really change your life and create that motor of change. Thank you so much for joining me, for sticking with me to the end. I really appreciate you being here. If there's one idea for you to take away, it's that you no longer need to focus on improving yourself all the time. You can start to settle into the life that's already with you right now. I look forward to meeting you soon.